So where did the Bible come from? Uh, that's a question you can ask a Christian, and they'll say, well, it came from God. But after that, the answers start to get a little fuzzy as to how we got the Bible that we have today. And so over the next three weeks, what I want to do is talk about how the Bible came to be what it is today. Talk about the Old Testament this week, New Testament next week, and then the books that didn't make it into the Bible and why those books didn't make it in the third week. But let's talk Old Testament. How do we get the Old Testament? Uh, really, the Old Testament breaks down into three parts historically. Um, you have the law, that's the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And those books were all composed by Moses. Now, yes, at the end of Deuteronomy, Moses dies. Somebody edited that. But by and large, the first five books are written by Moses. And it was understood even at the time that Moses was speaking directly to God. He was having conversations with God. He was writing down what God had told him to, to say to the people. And... Uh, right off the bat, the law is affirmed to be God's authoritative word to his people. Now, the next grouping of scripture is called the prophets. It's Joshua, Judges, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, the twelve minor prophets. All those compose this second section, which really just is a continual expansion of the main ideas that were presented in the law. It is this uh, continuation of God trying to get his point across to the people of how they're to live in light of the fact that they belong to him. Prophets that God is speaking to directly over a long period of time are writing down what God is telling them to write and they're producing that second section of the scriptures. The third is called the writings. It's, it's a kind of variety. It includes the wisdom literature of Psalms and Job and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs, but also Ruth and Lamentations and Daniel and Esther and Ezra and Nehemiah and first and second chronicles those also once again god speaking to people them writing it down and continuing that revelation that he has for his people on who he is and how they're to live in light of the fact that they have a relationship with him now about 400 bc god quit speaking through prophets this is around the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, after the people have returned, after the exile, the Babylonian exile lasted 70 years. God brought the people back, but they continued in their ways. And God didn't speak until John the Baptist showed up on the scene uh, hundreds of years later. So in that time, the canon became closed. The Old Testament uh, standard for God speaking closed. And the books that are in the Old Testament are surprisingly consistent from that time on. As a matter of fact, in 165 BC, Judas Maccabees, he is saving those books uh, from Antiochus Epiphanes, who is coming in to destroy Jerusalem and is making an attempt to get rid of all the scriptures. And Judas Maccabees takes the scriptures and hides them so that he can't destroy them all. Amazingly consistent in the books that are accepted all the way through history. Now, there is a, a brief uh, look at some apocryphal books. They're called the Apocrypha. Uh, some extra books that were considered, but we'll look at that for a different episode. Um, Throughout history, though, the entire history of the scripture as it developed, these books that we have in our current Old Testament are surprisingly consistent over and over again. These are the books that are considered the authority of 
God speaking to his people. Now, if you move into the New Testament times, you find uh, the greatest authority of all, Jesus Christ, quoting from all three of these sections. He quotes from the law, he quotes from the prophets, and he quotes from the writings, thus giving legitimacy to all three sections of the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, Jesus has such a high view of the Old Testament scriptures that he says not even one stroke or one letter is going to pass away until all is accomplished. So to sum up, the law, the prophets, the writings, they are all from God. And he spoke to people, to prophets and to, to others to write down what he wanted to reveal. And that is the authority. That's where the authority comes from. It is his word. It's not written by human beings who came up with some ideas and thought they'd write them down and try and get them in. It was God clearly speaking. It was the people at the time even recognizing that and incorporating that as God's standard and authority. So the canon is closed. The Old Testament is closed. The books have remained consistent throughout. And that's how the Old Testament has developed through time and how we got what we have today.